Here we're going to look at our first major group of organic macromolecules, the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic molecules composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, typically in a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio, meaning for every carbon there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. That's not an absolute, but it's a very good general rule for recognizing carbohydrates. The simplest of the carbs are monosaccharide sugars. These are the monomer used to build the more complex carbohydrate polymers. And examples of monosaccharides include glucose, shown here in both linear and ring form, and fructose, also shown in linear and ring form. Notice both of these have the same molecular formula. They're what we call hexose sugars, or six carbon sugars, and they have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens, a one to two to one ratio. You probably know these and recognize them as energy sources because the most important generalized function of carbs in the human body is as our main source of energy. They are used for energy storage, not as simple sugars, but as complex carbohydrates called starches, but they're used as an energy source. And frankly, we store energy only to use it later. Now, there are some exceptions to this throughout biology, and even in humans, there are some exceptions where carbohydrates are used for something other than energy. A good example of this involves the monosaccharides ribose and deoxyribose, which are used to build more complex, uh, uh, more complex organic molecules sorry, called nucleic acids, which are used in information storage, and we'll see in just a few videos. Notice the difference between ribose used in RNA and deoxyribose used in DNA is one hydroxyl group versus one hydrogen. As you look through all of these, recognize that all of these sugars have a large number of hydroxyl groups. You should see that looking at this picture. Carbohydrates are mainly hydrophilic due to their numerous hydroxyl groups. Carbohydrates essentially have a one-to-one -one carbon to oxygen ratio, and so they're fairly hydrophilic. Disaccharides, which you've probably heard of, are two monosaccharides covalently joined. So if we start with glucose and covalently bind a glucose to a fructose, we get sucrose, a disaccharide, table sugar, and in the process, water is liberated, which is why this is called dehydration synthesis. We take a hydroxyl group from one, a hydrogen from the other to form water, and then forge a covalent bond between the, uh, the two monosaccharides to form a disaccharide. This is, again, our glycosidic linkage, a covalent bond between two sugars. Polysaccharides are the complex carbohydrates, and these are carbohydrate polymers. They are chains of monosaccharides joined by glycosidic linkages. So if we take a whole bunch of glucoses and covalently join them to each other, we get glycogen, which is a form of starch. Depending on the angle of the bonds between the glucose molecules is what separates something like glycogen from something like non-digestible uh, dietary fiber, cellulose, other forms of polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are predominantly used in humans as an energy storage tool. So monosaccharides are our primary energy source, polysaccharides are for energy storage, and a few sources or forms of monosaccharides are used for building things like nucleic acids. So carbohydrates, what do you want to know in take home? They're largely hydrophilic organic molecules composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The monosaccharide and disaccharide sugars and starches or polysaccharides are the carbohydrates and they're used mainly as an energy source or for energy storage in the human body. Though there are exceptions, if you're ever asked what a carbohydrate does, the best go-to answer is they're an energy source.